All right, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and thanks for watching. Well, it's been quite a year in Pennsylvania politics and government. This is our year in review show with three of the state's leading journalists. Back in a moment. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host. Well, let me first start out by saying uh, happy holidays to everybody. Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, whatever you want to celebrate. We hope that you and your family have a great uh, holiday season. Well, it's our year in review show. We do this every year. We get uh, three of the state's top journalists together to bat around what happened in Pennsylvania politics over the past year and to look into the future. Joining me as often is the case are three of our regular contributors, Amy Worden from the uh, Philadelphia Inquirer, John Mysick from the Allentown, Allentown Call, Morning Call, I'll get that right, John, and Pete DeCourcy from Capital Wire. All right, Peter, let me start with you. Uh, off the top of your head, give me three or four of the big news stories that you wrote about this year. I think the biggest news story this year in politics and government is the loss of Rick Santorum. Okay. Unlike some people who lost because of things that happened this fall or mistakes they made in this campaign, Rick Santorum spent 12 years building toward this loss and lost by a stunning 59 to 41 percent after mm -hmm. two terms in the Senate and with people saying that he should run for president. Yep. He couldn't even get, he barely got two-fifths of the vote in Pennsylvania. John, name one. There's a bloodletting that's a close second to that. That's the May 17th primary. Yep. That's all the aster of uh, yep. Senate President Bob Jubilee, majority of their chip bike bill and a dozen incumbent legislators. That was the uh, dress rehearsal as it turned out for the uh, fall elections. Okay. Amy, give me one. Reform. Uh, it's stemming from the from the infamous pay raise, I, I think we saw we saw the beginnings okay. of, a, of a reform movement in Pennsylvania. All right, now by that, would, are we talking about things like reduce the size of the legislature, uh, term limits, uh, constitutional convention, the whole uh, ball of wax? All, all of the above, but but you also saw them going back and addressing some lingering problems from from sessions ago that, that have been hanging out there. Yeah. Lobby, Lob we're talking about lobbying reform, lobbying talking reform. about um, gambling reform. Yep. Um, they actually did finally. Get All right. Well, let's take up. Let's take each one of those up, and we'll chat a little bit about them. Let's take up uh, Pete's uh, idea about uh, uh, Rick Santorum. John, let me let me go to you. How big a story? I mean, this was a seismic event. You have an incumbent U.S. senator who goes down, basically, but by 18 percentage points or so, in a stunning defeat, the likes of which uh, virtually unprecedented for a United States senator to lose anyway. It's true. I mean, I mean, you got Santorum operating on one level as sort of the architect of his own political fate, but I'm yep. placing him in a larger context as sort of as, as the poster child for what happened to Republicans nationwide yep. this fall. Uh, distance, occasionally distanced himself from the White House, but tied himself to the Bush White House as well. Tried to use the war on terror as, as, as closing, as, as endgame rhetoric. Mm -hmm. Didn't work out for him. Was floundering much the way that Republicans were all over the country, was getting killed by the war, was getting killed by, you know, by these various sort of anti-incumbent sentiments that were welling up. As, as, as you know, they say, as goes, whatever right. goes, as goes the country, as goes Santorum, mm -hmm. as, so goes the GOP. Peter, as a segue into that, there's, there is no doubt that Senator Santorum <laughs> was in effect the de facto leader of the Republican Party in the state. I think you would agree with that. Yes. What does, how, how much weaker is the Republican Party today as a result of what happened with Santorum's defeat, and uh, as we tape this show, uh, the Democrats in control of the state house. How much, and the loss of four congressional seats. How much weaker do you think the party is today, symbolized by Santorum's loss? Oh, immeasurably weaker, because you're talking about a party that is no longer has a majority of me Pennsylvania members of Congress, which it thought it would have forever and boasted about. Mm -hmm. Drew a plan to make it two thirds, and now they ha don't even have the majority. Right. Um, they lost a house. For the first time in 12 years, uh, the, they lost a chamber, the state house. And the other thing is, Lynn Swan um, show got 39 percent against Ed Rendell. Even Ed Rendell thought that thought that kind of showing was so unlikely that he bet his son Jesse that he would buy him a $150,000 sports car <laughs> if he did it. And now he's stuck buying the sports car. But so even Rendell thought he was safe, you know, wagering half of his yearly income. On the Somehow I don't think kid. Jesse's going to get the car. What do you think, Governor? Well, we'll have to get him on here. The, the, the judge, the, the ju judge Rendell, the white, 
Marjorie Rendell, the wife, is is trying to figure out a, a graceful way out of that. Uh, because how to get out? Because you know she makes <laughs> have yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe a matchbox version. Yeah, no, I was going to say yeah, one of those miniatures you put on there. We could buy one and send it. So I mean, nobody saw this coming. Even Rendell yeah. didn't see this coming. Yeah. And so that's the thing. And well, I agree a lot with what John said. I think that a lot of this was sort of the anti-GOP thing, but a lot of this is, as Amy said was specific revulsion against what mm -hmm. people in office were Go doing. Ahead. You want to add to that? You yeah, know. no, I, th I think the, the issue is that, uh, uh, that, that, that there's, a, there's an identity crisis in the Republican mm -hmm. Party right now. And, uh, and the moderates are pushing har back hard. They mm -hmm. said, look at this election. You know, that's proof positive that, that, uh, that there are more moderates in this, in this uh, state, growing numbers, yeah. certainly in the southeast. And, uh, and they should have a larger voice in the party. And that's going to... And gonna, look how far uh, they're willing to go to get there. They voted for Bob Casey. It's not like they voted for yeah. Arlen Specter or Ed Rendell. By 150,000 votes or something in the southeastern part of, in the Philadelphia suburbs. And there's a, I mean, there's a basic sort of more logistic problem that's going on here as well. Rick Santorum raised a ton of money for the GOP. Yeah. He was an enthusiastic soldier. He was the guy who got the, who got the, who got the party machine moving and, and sort right. of helped dollars to flow. The question now is who is going to step into that gap and, and keep the party strong yeah. now that they've lost such a powerful figure. All right. Uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to take up uh, John's suggestion that the uh, number of incumbents who lost in the May primary and this huge change in the state legislature has some real meaning as Governor Rendell begins his uh, second term uh, early in January. Uh, we'll be back in a